Hi, in this video I want to put the new uh, module for MIDI recently added to Sonic Pi um, on GitHub uh, through its paces. It's not yet been fully integrated to uh, Sonic Pi but I've managed to um, hack it a bit and get it working on my machine here and it really is very impressive. In order to do this I'm going to start off with uh, a piece which I wrote for Sonic Pi back in last August, which plays the first movement of Bass Brandenburg Concerto uh, number no. four. And this uh, program, which looks quite long, in fact is quite long, um, looks rather fearsome, but in fact, in essence, it's very, very simple. It simply consists of the same code about 13 times over for each of the different instrument channels which are used. I've just highlighted one of them, which is the uh, solo violin part on top, or what part of it, and um, the data is held in arrays in pairs. A10 holds some notes, B10 holds the corresponding timings, um, and then we go down to a thread in which we have a, um, some nested four lex loops, which simply ultimately lead to a play command here, which is going to play uh, each note in turn for a sustain it for the duration of the note, 90%, and releasing it over the last 10%. Then there's a sleep and the whole process continues um, uh, again. That's uh, fine. And if we move over to Sonic Pi, um, the, the reason we have, uh, have to use this command, this run file command, is that the program is too long to fit into a buffer and to successfully play. So we have to feed it in to Sonic Pi 2.11 or 2.12 now, the, the MIDI alpha, uh, using the run file command. And we can listen to that and see what it sounds like. <coughs> you can see that there's simply lots and lots of synth calls with various synthesizers, pulse, blade and beep I think are used and it gives quite a pleasing rendition of this. We'll stop that playing. What I wanted to do was to see whether we could use the same thing and play it um, with MIDI uh, sending the output to my um, iMac here which is running Logic Pro and you can see that it's already set up to accept 13 different input channels uh, ranging from uh, solo violins at the end here. I'll just move that down a little bit so that we can see the see the top. Solo violins there, uh, piano solo, uh, flute solo parts, then uh, the four violin, one violin, two violas, cellos, basses, and then the continue, which is in fact four harpsichord parts. It's quite intricate and so split up to make it easier for Sonic Pi to play it. So, if we move down here, then I can actually comment out that first line if I select it. Um, oops, which mouse am I using? That one. And we'll comment that out and we'll go down to the second one here, which is going to play exactly the same piece as before, but this time it's going to send it out as uh, MIDI commands, which will be sent from the MacBook Pro here up to my iMac. So if I come down here and we start that running, you can see up here that we've got the various parts showing on the visually there. And if I come down here to the end and we take the volume right down, you can see there's nothing there coming out. Uh, Sonic Pi is still churning out the MIDI information which is being received. I've just cut off the volume right here. that works pretty well. There are some drawbacks with it. The main one being that although these mark the parts at the top are marked for solo violin, uh, I'll move that up a little bit, are marked for solo violin, uh, there isn't actually a solo violin instrument in uh, Logic Pro, and so it's several violins playing, which is not ideal. I'll stop that playing, and perhaps come down here and have a look at the um, code which has produced it. That's the original. If I move down to the next file, which is MIDI, um, it's exactly the same uh, code, except that we've added at the top here um, a small routine which is going to play the MIDI notes. Uh, the core of that is the line which is marked here MIDI N dur dur x channel channel. And that's going to play a MIDI note of value N 
for a duration given by the value held here to the channel supplied by that channel variable there. And uh, this is simply uh, going to go round a loop which is equal to the number of uh, lengths, the number of notes in the um, array which is passed in here in notes, minus one because the number is going to start at zero and the duration array corresponding there, the channel, the three pieces of information fed in. Uh, it's slightly more complex because uh, two complexities. The first one is that sometimes I want to play a chord where the next entry in this list of notes, instead of being something like A4, might be something like brackets, a square bracket A4, comma, um, C5. And that would play the notes A4 and C5 together. And so we have to test to see whether the next entry responds to the command each. If it does, it means that we've got a, a sort of sub list, if you like, inside the main array. And it simply goes through a little loop which plays each of those notes uh, one after the other without any pause between. Otherwise, if it's a normal note, then we simply are going to play it. But we have to make sure that if it's a rest, we don't because the MIDI command will not at the moment accept rests as an entry, although the play command will. And hopefully that might be one of the changes which may be made um, later on to that command. And then we sleep for the duration of the note and go back to the next one. So the program is exactly the same. Uh, the only difference here is that I've wrapped the text so you can see that there are in fact an awful lot of notes in this. And actually, if we look far uh, down the middle of this, you can see here what I was talking about, how we've got this list of notes in this section here, but interspersed with the individual notes like C5 there, we've got a chord E4 C5, another chord F4 D5 played, and that's how we actually handle that. And then underneath that, we've got the list of all the durations, and then we continue uh, on to the next part. So all of the parts are exactly the same. They use this for next loop simply to pass the data to the mplay function that we've just defined. That one going to channel one. And if we look further down, we'll find another part down here, which is uh, exactly the same, except in this case, it's going to send it to channel four. And that goes on all the way down. So that's what we've just been listening to. Now, the interesting fact uh, occurs that if we want to actually do both, we want to play with synths on Sonic Pi and MIDI sent up to Logic Pro. And that could simply be done by mixing together the uh, different parts of the programme. I said that the violin one parts were not ideal because it wasn't playing a single instrument. So what I'm going to do in this file is to play the violins. Uh, here you can see we've got the the MIDI play function up here. But down here we start off playing the solo violin and this is going to simply play using the blade synth here. And we've got the thread here which is simply going to go to uh, ordinary play commands. And um, if we move down beyond the two parts of do the solo violin which are both the same, all the remaining parts are using the MIDI play function. So this means that we're playing MIDI for all the parts apart from the solo violin part at the top and that will be played internally by Sonic Pi. So let's uh, switch over here and listen to that and see what happens. Now if I turn up the volume of Sonic Pi and we turn down the volume here We should be able to hear all being well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we're not because I've uh, got not. To, I've, one thing I've forgotten to do is to change over. Let's uh, just do that. We'll change from that file to this one here. That was exactly the same as we listened to previously. This is the one which is going to play the uh, Sonic Pi part, um, the violin part on here. There you are. Now, if we turn this down and turn Sonic Pi volume up, you can hear the solo part coming out there. I'll mute the rest, just the solo part. Turn the rest of the parts up. 
you can hear that the two blend perfectly together. You'll notice no violin input there because the violin input is coming out with the uh, synth here. And if I actually stop that there and we look down here, hopefully, let's see, yes, right at the bottom there, you can see that a note is being played on the synth blade and just above it there are some MIDI uh, commands there. And if we look further up we might find, yes, there's another synth note being played there and then all the MIDI notes for the other parts being played in there. So the two do actually work very well together. Um, if we switch back to the um, code here, one thing which I omitted to say is that I've actually put a small time warp on the solo violin part. Now what a time warp is that it actually delays the playing of that part or everything inside the time warped do ends loop, which is from there down to here. Those two solo violin parts are going to play uh, with a very slight delay, and it is slight, it's five thousandths of a second. If I take that out, it actually sounds very much the same, but it just sounds slightly crisper if I put that slight delay in, which allows for the slight latency in the send time of the um, MIDI from here via my local network to my iMac, where it's then decoded and played in uh, Logic Pro. And the final example which we have here, which I'm going to move on to now, um, is very similar to the uh, the one we've just looked at. The difference here is that we're going to play all of the parts um, with by Sonic Pi, all as um, using the play command all the way down here until we get to the continuum parts at the bottom, and they are going to use the MIDI play part. Now the reason for this is that they are harpsichord parts and it's quite difficult to render a harpsichord nicely on Sonic Pi. I think I used the pulse synthesizer when I did it in the original but it really sounds quite nice playing the harpsichord on here and everything else on Sonic Pi down here. So let's switch over and this time I'll remember to um, comment that out and to uncomment this fourth version here and we'll start that playing and here we go. So practically everything is playing on Sonic Pi here. Apart from, if we move up here, you'll see that we have got the harpsichord parts playing here. And if I turn down the volume on Sonic Pi down here, you can hear the harpsichord parts coming out from there. I'll turn up the Sonic Pi volume slightly and bring in the fade up the other parts. So there we have it. An example of the new MIDI module being put through its paces as far as playing MIDI is concerned. Uh, it does actually have some other commands in it that I've not actually explored these too much other than the MIDI all notes off command. But if I was to turn on the um, documentation, I've actually enabled the documentation for this in my machine. And if we uh, come up here and move up to here, we've got the MIDI command there. The triggering and external synthesis is what we're doing there. We've got MIDI all notes off. There's MIDI control change messages you can send. There's MIDI clock beats and ticks which you can use for synchronizing things together using the Sonic Pi as um, a master clock and uh, various other commands down here which uh, again I've not gone into in great detail but they are all there although as this says here and I must emphasize this is alpha software it's the first version it's a tremendous piece of work by um, Sam and by Louis and by Joe who've worked together to um, collaborate on this. Um, there's Erlang involved, there is a module to convert uh, OSC messages to MIDI in both directions which Louis has developed and Sam has put the whole lot together in Sonic Pi. Um, it is alpha software, it, it will change I'm sure and in fact even the syntax of the commands may change let alone how they are actually implemented but uh, I for one am very excited by what it can do now and I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this video and watching it as well. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.